My name is Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. I'm from Miami, Florida, born and raised here. And, uh, I love this. I love to compete. I love to grapple. I've been grappling, obviously, my whole life as well. My name is Anthony Showtime Pettis, UFC lightweight, welterweight, featherweight. Um, I fought in every weight class in the UFC around my weight class. Uh, martial arts is my life. I've been doing martial arts my whole life, pretty much every day. And I think Pettis um, actually is a stud grappler. He has some good submissions over some guys that, that I know are sound grapplers, like Gilbert Melendez and Ben Henderson. He made both those guys tap. So I know Pettis can be extra clutch. If there's something, we, I, uh, the number one attribute I'd give to him wouldn't be spa, power, speed, or toughness, or strength. It'd be his clutch ability to pull huge wins off when he needs them, you know? Like, he could just find a way to win. I grew up watching George fight on the internet, you know, watching him fight uh, with Kimbo in the backyards in Miami. So, uh, you know, I'm a fan of, uh, of George. Me and George know each other. We, uh, we definitely uh, had the same management, um, first round management. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the guys I've, I've been around for a long time. Um, I respect his skill set. I don't know much about his grappling game. I, I've seen them, uh, you know, obviously with punches, it's different. Um, so uh, I'm interested to go test my, my skill set. I know he's a game guy. He's, he always comes to fight. I was just wearing him down. Swim him down physically, then mentally, and then he'll just give into my will. It's not, uh, it's not a question in my mind, you know? I, he's, like I said, he's very good. I respect his skill set. He's a very strong competitor, especially with the submissions. But I've never walked into a grappling match or a fight thinking that the other guy's better. I most definitely think I got the uh, advantage over George. I think he's definitely a tough guy, but uh, when it comes down to the skills and to the, the, the actual techniques, and I've put the time in, I've, I've, I've earned my, my ranks, and uh, I'm very confident in my, in my submission skills. I, I'm always betting on me, and if I'm wrong, so be it. Let's find out, you know, but I'm going to give it everything I have in me to make sure I come up with the victory, you know? So, uh, you know, I'm excited to go out there and, and show off. The main event has arrived. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, Anthony Showtime Pettis. Two mixed martial artists known all over the world for their exciting styles. And tonight we see them grapple here in Pensacola. Anthony Showtime Pettis really took the MMA world by storm nine years ago when he was 23 years old. Jumped off the fence, kicked Ben Henderson in the head. Nearly knocked him out, claimed the WEC title. They called it the Showtime kick. He ended up on a Wheaties box. He's truly one of the all-time greats in the UFC. He sure is, man. I mean, I love this matchup, man. I mean, the fact that, the, that we get to see these two guys compete at anything is a blessing. You know, Masvidal, Masvidal is a Florida legend. You know, not, not only from his MMA career, but he started in the backyard. The bow yard. He started fighting in the streets here. And the fact that we get a chance to see these two compete just weeks before they're going to fight is, know. Is, is incredible. And Anthony Showtime Pettis, we talk about that Showtime kick and how he won that title against Benson Henderson in the WEC. Let's not forget that he submitted Benson Henderson in the UFC and claimed the UFC title that uh, same way by beating Benson Henderson. And if you look at all the victories of Anthony Pettis, 18 of his 22 wins come by way of stoppage, 10 by way of knockout, eight by way of submission. So to say that this man is a striker, that it's almost disrespectful to his ground game. No, he's got a great ground game, especially a bottom game. And I think he's gonna need that tonight because I'm gonna give the advantage of wrestling to George Masvidal. George has spent a tremendous amount of time working on his wrestling. I don't see Pettis being able to put George on his back. I see George putting Pettis on his back early, and then we're gonna see some legit old school guard play. Anthony Showtime Pettis tonight in Pensacola looks to put on a show against Jorge Masvidal. You want to talk about being a legend? Sure. Masvidal is a Florida legend. He's a combat sports legend. And honestly, in my opinion, Dean, he's a few decisions going his way that didn't go his way from being really one of the all-time great lightweights. He's now fighting at welterweight. We'll actually take on Anthony Pettis' teammate and Ben Askren here in just a few weeks. But looking at Masvidal, he's a guy that is very rarely finished. He's lost 13 fights in his MMA career, only three by way of stoppage, and then you start to look at his decisions. He's lost 10 decisions. And okay. probably, go ahead, but, but, I'm Listen sorry. to this, 10 decisions, five of them were split. So you're looking at 
his decisions, half of those decisions that didn't go his way, one judge thought he won the fight. Yeah. And I'm sure he thought he won the fight, which is why he probably didn't close it out, because he's had a, a, a history of just stepping off the gas because it was too easy for him. Masvidal, I think, is a prime example of a, a fighter playing a combat sports game where maybe someone gets their hand raised, but if we were in the boatyard, we'd be saying, well, Jorge Masvidal won the fight. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. You know, when you think about his fights against uh, Ally and Kenta, and even I was there when he fought Benson Henderson, it was just so easy for him that he thought he was winning, he was coasting. Meanwhile, you know, the activity, the other guy was trying so hard to win that the judges was like, wow, boy, I guess he's trying harder, so we're going to give him the win. But Masvidal has always been that guy who just coasted his way into decision losses, and which could have easily been wins for him. Jorge Gamebred, Masvidal, Anthony Showtime, Pettis, our main event. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this grappling affair. 34 years old is Gamebred, two years the elder of Anthony Showtime, Pettis, Masvidal, one inch taller. He has a one-inch reach advantage, if you want to call it that. Grappling tonight, Masvidal versus Pettis. For our official introductions, here's Christopher James. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, are you all ready for the main event of the night? Pensacola, we're happy to be here with you tonight with Team Tool Promotions. And to all you watching on Are You Live, Thanks for buying the pay-per-view. Thanks for tuning in. And now, let's get down to action. This bout is being brought to you by our good friends at Banks Construction. And it's scheduled for one 10-minute round. If at the end of that round, we do not have a winner by submission, the bout will be declared a draw. And now, let's meet our grapplers. Introducing first, grappling out of the blue corner. Standing 5 feet 10 and representing Rufus Sport MMA. Fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is the former WEC and UFC lightweight champion of the world, Anthony Showtime Pettis. And his opponent grappling out of the Red corner, standing five feet 11, representing American top team, fighting out of Miami, Florida. He is a perennial UFC contender and Mr. Three Piece in the soda. Please welcome Jorge Gabriel Masvidal. One 10 minute round here in Pensacola. Final instru instructions to our grapplers. Let's have fun. Guys, let's have fun. Let's get a submission and have fun. Let's get it. Anthony Showtime Pettis, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. This is our main event here in Pensacola. TJ DeSantis, Dean Thomas. One 10-minute round here between these two fighters to sort it all out. The tie up early here. Yeah, I would not be surprised if Pettis pulls guard. I don't think, I don't know if he'll do it early, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does pull guard. I don't think he wants to really tangle with Masvidal too much on the wrestling. There Pettis goes for a take, take a shot, but I think, I think that's, you know, just a, a decoy. You both these men fighting at welterweight now in the UFC, but it's been a considerable time at lightweight. But really equally sized. It's, it's not that one fighter is is really all that much bigger than the other. Right, and I mean, they're, and they're both coming off the biggest wins of their career, and w in which they were, we felt like they were going to be undersized True. in those fights. You know, both of them knocking out, respectively, Darren Till and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Controlling the back now of Pettis is Masvidal. Pettis goes to a knee. Masvidal thought about trying to get that hook in. He bails on it. Interesting to see how Masvidal deals with this being in the corner like that because he's kind of limiting himself of his movement of what he can do in that corner. Pettis back to his feet. 
Pensacola Bay Center kind of split in their support here. Some chance for Pettis. You mentioned Masvidal, really a legend in these parts. Well, that's South Florida. This, is a, this, is, a little, this is a little it, different. We don't claim it's still Florida. <laughs> it's still Florida. King of the boatyard. From the boatyard to the bright lights, Masvidal takes on Pettis's teammate Ben Askren here in a couple weeks. I wonder if there's any intel gathering here for Pettis grappling against Masvidal. Um, I don't think so. You know, I, I think there is not a lot you can you can tell from a situation like this. And Masvidal's not going to have this approach yeah. against Ben Askren. Yeah, right, right, right. Pettis not afraid to give up his back here to Masvidal. Masvidal really hasn't tried to get the hooks in. No, well, you know, I think that's kind of Pettis' style. See, and there it goes right there. I knew he would want to get to his guard eventually. But I think he was just waiting his time. He didn't want to spend 10 minutes in his guard. But, you know, I think his time kind of dwindles down. He's going to want to give himself an opportunity to start throwing up some submissions here. Pettis goes inverted, and Masvidal kind of disengages. <laughs> All fun and games. But this is not something you'd see anything different from like EBI, right? You'd see something like that. I don't know if I've ever seen someone do an inverted butt scoot towards someone at EBI, but. Maybe not EBI, but I've seen that in video. Sure. Yeah. And I've always wondered about that. Pettis, his nickname is Showtime. He's here to put on a show. I think a lot of respect here from both of these guys as well. I mean, Pettis on his seat. Masvidal doesn't really want to go and, and dive into the guard of Pettis, and I think that's a sign of respect. Yeah. This is a strong spot for... Yeah, there he goes. It's a strong spot for uh, Masvidal, that, that Darce choke. He's got a great Darce, but Pettis was hip to it and uh, got his chest down onto the floor. Masvidal trying to put some weight on Pettis. Pettis able to get to a knee now, back to his feet. Working a Kimura. As Pettis, he bails on it. Six minutes remain here. Pettis kind of playing possum. I think he's waiting for Miles Vidal to make a mistake. And I think he, he might be waiting for him to shoot to make a mistake to hit his guillotine. Pettis has got a great guillotine. If you look at his resume, most of those submission wins are done by guillotine. Maybe not most of them, but a, a good portion. You mentioned the submission of Benson Henderson. It was an arm bar that earned Pettis a UFC title back in August of 2013. You mentioned the guillotine. He did submit Charles Do Bronx Oliveira in 2016 with the guillotine. It's interesting, between these two gentlemen, they both own a submission over Michael Chiesa, who has a very well-respected ground game in mixed martial arts, and Kies has only been submitted three times in his entire career, and you're looking at two guys that did it. Halfway point here of this round. I would say regulation, but it's the only round. We don't go to overtime. If we fail to get a submission here in this 10 minutes, the bout will be declared a draw. And truly, this is a thrill to see two high-level athletes like this grapple. Yeah. And it's for charity. This is a, a, a bullyproof um, fundraising event. We appreciate everyone joining us on Are You Live? All for a good cause tonight. And when Masvidal heard about this event, he absolutely signed on immediately. Bullyproof helps kids in tough situations get into the gym. Right now, speaking of tough situations, Masvidal trying to put Pettis in one, maybe trying to frame up a arm triangle if he's able to get off to the side there, but he's got that hook in. And, Pettis seems to be aware of the attack. Yeah, Masvidal putting a lot of pressure on Pettis. Again, Pettis, but Pettis, you know, that's his grappling style. It's very lackadaisical, but he, and he's waiting for a mistake. And if, if Masvidal gives him an opening, you will see him attack it. Pettis able to get free. Now jumping guillotine for showtime. Again, I, and that's what I was saying. Like, he, he just jumps at you. Like, you, he plays very lackadaisical, gets you off your guard, and then goes for it. He'll jump off the cage and kick you in the head or just jump straight up in the air and put you in a guillotine. Now back on the feet. 
You see him playing possum, just kind of scooting over, not even looking at him. Again, he tries an, a leg attack there. And I think we're seeing two high-level professional athletes with big fights coming up for themselves. You know, Masvidal fighting Askren, Anthony Pettis fighting Nate Diaz, and they're here competing. This isn't just a demo. This isn't an exhibition. These guys want to win. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that they have come out here to compete, you know, with, within weeks of their fights because, you know, they're just revving their bodies up and getting used to, to competing in front of an audience. You were talking about, you know, the walk that is made by the amateur fighters. They need to get used to that. It's never a bad thing for fighters like these guys at the highest level to, to make that walk and just, you know, kind of no, knock the rust off. Absolutely not, and this is why they're here is to make that walk, get used to this, get used to having a person in front of you that's trying to beat you and you're trying to beat that other, other person. Now, obviously, the ramifications aren't as as much as a UFC fight, but right. they still get to enjoy it and, and get to feel it and know what it's like again. Trying to grab a hold of that neck again for a choke is Masvidal. Touch over two minutes remain here in the contest. Again, TJ DeSantis, Dean Thomas, Pensacola Bay Center here in Pensacola, Florida. Trying to get a takedown now of his own is Anthony Pettis. Masvidal wise to it, now back at the feet. Yeah, Masvidal scrambled out of that with everything. And that was what I said earlier. I don't think that Pettis will be able to get Masvidal onto his back. You know, Masvidal spent a tremendous amount of time in the wrestling room and just focusing on wrestling so that that never happens to him. Masvidal utilizing that strength to get control. The back of Pettis able to pick him up, put him on the floor. We have yet to see Masvidal really put in a hook here and try to control the back of Pettis. See there, if he changes things up here in the final 75 seconds. There's something about Pettis that he's doing to Masvidal that's keeping him from doing that. And it's, it, there's a feeling that he's getting that it's not making, it's uncomfortable. So he's not trusting it. Because you, can, you know that Pettis is setting him up for something. Final minute of the match, Pettis trying to grab a hold of that right leg of Masvidal. Masvidal again on the neck of Pettis. Pettis wise to it. 45 seconds left. And Pettis a black belt from Daniel Wanderlei from Milwaukee. Very tricky, crafty ground game. Masvidal now here in side control, 30 seconds remain. Look, he sees, again, he's, he plays possum. He tries to bait you into feeling like you're doing good, and then he catches you with something. Trying to trip up Masvidal. Masvidal laughing it off. Final 15 seconds of the match. Time is going to expire, but not before Anthony Pettis jumps on something. Nothing there, and that's a wrap. Jorge Gamebred, Masvidal, Anthony Showtime, Pettis. They grapple to a draw. What a treat that was, Dean Thomas. Yeah, that was a treat. That was a lot of fun to watch. And these guys, they didn't have to come out here, and they did just for our, our entertainment. Two UFC warriors with huge fights in their careers upcoming and not afraid to put it on the line and, and showcase their grappling skills. And for both of these guys where it's mixed martial arts all the time, I'm sure this was a treat for them to yeah, come out yeah. and grapple against I mean, a high-level opponent. You know, they've never competed against each other. And to have, you know, to come out here and compete in this safe environment, so to say, um, it had to be fun for them. See, Masvidal, he had the control of the neck there of Pettis and uh, utilized some wrestling to get Anthony to the floor. Looked like he was going to try to break off to the side for maybe an arm triangle, but Pettis was wise to it. Really good display of defensive and offensive grappling from both of these guys. Pettis tried to jump that guillotine. Masvidal wise to it, and he's still having some fun inside the ring. Our main event does not disappoint. Anthony Showtime Pettis, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. To make this one official, we will throw it to Christopher James. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all better make some noise for these two men putting on a hell of a show. The match goes the full 10 minutes. Our referee, Trey Aldor, calls it a draw. 
And now we're gonna have a, uh, we're gonna have both these guys speaking with our own, D. Thomas. Man, that was a lot of fun for us to watch. How was that for you, Anthony? I always have a good time out here. Jorge's just one of the tough guys, man. You wanna play with my guard? Smart for him, strong on top. It was a fun fight. Uh, it was interesting to see you guys compete. We've never seen you guys compete. Is there anything that you felt from him that you that surprised you? He has good awareness, man. Like every time I was like spading him for something, he would pull back, put the guard up in his face. So uh, yeah, he just good awareness. And he's strong, tough dude. So obviously you got a big fight coming up. Tell us about that. Nate Diaz, make sure you guys are tuning in August 17th. Me and Nate, Nate Diaz throwing down. Um, tune in for that. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Anthony Showtime Pettis. Where's George? George, come on over here. Same thing for you, man. That was a lot of fun to watch. Is there anything that surprised you about Anthony Pettis? Uh, well, I knew that he'd be pulling the slick stuff, you know? He likes to act docile like he's asleep and then explode with him. Sorry about that. Man, I know how he is, man. He's a slick dude. He likes to lure people to sleep and then go. So I was very uh, cautious of that, you know? It seemed to catch you off guard almost with the jumping guillotine. How close was that? Um, part close, because he was wrapped around the chin, but I, I saw it. I recognized it once he jumped up and he kicked him, but he did get it for a second, you know? It was pretty tight. Now, you obviously got a pretty big fight coming up, too. Tell us about that. July 6th, watch some real life violence. If you like violence, tune in July 6th. Who are you fighting? Some nobody, mother, some dead motherfucker. That's all that counts. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Jorge Masvidal. <laughs> 